Hello, World of Tank Blitzers. It's Littlefinger, and I've I got a subscriber replay to show for you. Uh, this is the AT7. We are in a tier 7 tank destroyer. This is obviously a British tank, um, and a tank that I just absolutely despise playing, primarily for its uh, lack of mobility, and you seem to always be the last one alive, and then you get swarmed on. Anyway, we're on mines here, and a very interesting setup in position. Typically, if I'm a TD on this map, I'm pulling over to the far side and getting behind the bush, um, just on the other side of this structure. But uh, you can see that the benefit here, obviously, is that he's got sight lines all the way up the hill, and then with just a small turn, he can get sight lines down to the heavy alley where tanks often come through on a flank um, and plus he's also hiding half of his tank behind a solid structure which is really important with the AT-7 so there he gets um, shot from the side and obviously that bounces and so you can see with a quick turn he now has shots down that heavy alley and he's just popping in a few blind shots seeing if anything will go in hoping that he can just back that tank off um, one of the really nice things about this tank uh, not that there's a lot is the gun so it's an actually an 83 millimeter gun with a shell velocity of over a thousand and it does have some really good penetration numbers of 226 um, <clears throat> you look at some of the other TDs in the class there, the Yagpan there was uh, 200 pen, SU-150 is 175 pen, so at 226, um, and that's obviously without any sort of equipment or anything, does have some really nice pen. Obviously, you can see here from the damage that he's dishing out as these guys slowly climb the hill, um, he's only doing about 190 damage per shot, so your alpha is a little low, but you do have a really fast rate of fire. 13 rounds per minute. The other part about this gun is it does have some good handling. Uh, the dispersion is extremely low at 0.28. Aim time is, is pretty good at 1.9. Um, not as good as some of the German tanks though. And so now he's just being patient. Um, and this is always a great strategy. One of my biggest complaints, you can see there, he even writes out patience. Um, I love it. You know, that's one of my biggest complaints about the game right now. You get these guys, they think they can do all the damage in the first 30 seconds of a game. And little do they know that they are taken out um, very quickly. <laughs> Look at this, through the building, nice. Um, and they don't help the team at all. So you know it, it really would help the game a lot if you guys took this game not just to be a 100 percent offensive game but also took it for what it was as a defensive game and real interesting strategy here his gunner is injured and he's got a med kit but he is not choosing to use it so i'm not sure maybe he's uh doesn't have a lot of credits and doesn't want to spend them um, close combat fighting I guess that's probably not necessary to go ahead and get the repair in um, but I think I probably would have gotten that over with and then by the time the end of the game rolls around uh, you've got that repair kit med kit back again so you can see how fast this gun aims and how fast it reloads they're down to four on two and they're kind of chasing around this RU right now and he knows these guys are starting to come over the hill, so he's going to push on around here and get that kill in there. So now it's three on two. We have uh, half health KV3 coming up here and an IS who's just a one shot most likely up on the hill there. So he's going to really work. And this is where I was talking about I would have fixed that gunner already. Um, but he again being extremely patient. And I guess you have to be in an AT. Um, and so he'll look here and take his shot and finish that guy off and coming over the hill there is um, 
their TD, the stutter Emil. Um, so he's going to push here on the KV-3, rightly so. Again, still hasn't fixed that gunner. Um, KV-3 is going to take an HE shot and uh, do very little damage. So that quick reloading takes out the KV-3. So a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's already got five kills. Um, I guess he was expecting the, the Studer Emil to come up behind him there and... and this is all the more benefit for uh, the AT because he obviously has that huge, huge commander's hatch, which is the biggest weak, weak spot on this tank, sitting right there um, just to the left of his gun. So if he can get behind a hard surface like what he did at the opening of the game, it makes hitting this tank, um, penetrating it, just that much more difficult. And so he's doing a great job. Um, this is obviously how you want to drive this tank. And you can see they're getting those bounces in. Doesn't even repair the tracks here, so um, my guess is he's trying to conserve as many um, credits as possible with this tank. So he's got the DPM over uh, the TD here, so he's just going to finish him off. But, like I said, that's just an amazingly played way to protect his tank, get into position, be patient, do 3,467 damage in an AT uh, with six kills. And, I mean, it's a great game. So, anyway, um, not sure why any of the stats weren't pulling up when I looked at them. But, uh, again, that was a really good game there. And uh, just an example on how to play that AT. So uh, congratulations on that mastery. And uh, as always, guys, get educated, not fingered. Little finger out.